A few months ago, I finally pushed myself to learn how to fly an FPV drone. I decided to go for the DJI FPV as it is the only drone on the market which has some sort of stabilization systems in case I get something wrong. It turned out to be a super useful feature and already saved me a lot of crashes as the drone just stabilizes itself as soon as you lose signal. But besides this huge advantage over other FPV drones, the DJI FPV has one big flaw. It's video quality. You can't record in cinematic frame rates like 24 25 FPS the field of view is not wide enough and the image falls apart pretty quickly when doing heavier color grading. So I knew that I needed to fix this by somehow attaching another camera onto the drone. And after doing some research on the internet, I finally found something which looked like it could work. In order to attach a camera onto my FPV drone, I had to get a 3D printed action camera mount, which apparently only ships from China or the US. As I'm a very impatient guy, I already came up with an alternative solution by zip tying another GoPro mount to the back of my drone. <laughs> Let's see if this works. With this setup, I could actually get some really cool shots as the GoPro was facing backwards while I flew in the other direction. But still, I needed a solution for the top of my drone. And after two weeks of waiting, I finally made my way to the post office in order to pick up my 3D printed mount. Do you need anything else? No? Okay. Gracias, adios. We got it! We got it! <laughs> Back home, I figured out how to mount the adapter onto my drone, which was pretty straightforward. I just unscrewed the four screws at the front and the side of my drone, put the screws into the action camera mount and screwed them back in again. And after around 20 minutes of screwing, everything was in place. All right, so I just mounted the GoPro 9 on top of the DJI FPV drone. And to be honest, it looks quite good. The mount is a little bit softer so that we get rid of some of the micro vibrations. So I think it's going to be really good. I think that the GoPro 9 is a really good choice it is quite famous in the world of FPV and also you have some of the best stabilization that you get in any camera if you use an additional program called real steady and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later so the plan for today is to just show you how the GoPro performs compared to the DJI FPV camera then I'm going to talk you through my settings for the best quality and stabilization and overall we're just going to test it out on some of my favorite spots on the island together with Phil and Boris and yeah I'm just going to find out if this actually is the perfect FPV setup. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so now we're in the car with Phil and Boris. And yeah, I thought it would be cool to, to go full force right from the beginning with some techno. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so usually I used to fly stabilized DJI drones while driving in the car because I used to work for another car YouTuber. But yeah, didn't do it with the DJI drone so far, but I thought it would be a good idea to do it uh, for the first time while having the goggles on. I'm just gonna go for it and we're gonna see what it looks like. Let's go. At this point, I want to add that you should not try this yourself unless you are a professional drone pilot and there are no other cars on the road. Flying from the inside of a car takes a lot of experience and it can quickly cause motion sickness. So please stay safe and keep others safe as well. Alrighty! I'm excited, man. Dude, that feels like a video game. Dude, that feels so cool. <laughs> because the screen is not shaking. Dude, that is so sick. Phil has more stress than me. <laughs> Dude, that's going to be so epic to fly around here. Okay, I'm gonna land it. Oh, I think that was good. <laughs> Let's get outside. That's actually what I love about the DJI FPV that you can just catch it in the air if you switch to normal mode because it's stabilized and I don't have to worry that I'm just bumping and that I have a bad landing. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, guys, so if you've watched some of my other drone videos, you probably already know this spot. It is called Alberkutsch Watchtower, I think, and it's just this small tower on probably the highest point here in, in the northern part of Mallorca. And yeah, I'm just super stoked to fly the FPV drone here. I'm just going to see what I can capture. Yo! What do you say? <laughs> Holy shit! I didn't expect Fuck. that. Yeah. That's pretty deep. Wow, windy. All right, so I just went into this small gap of cliffs here because this is the only place where I don't have any wind noise. But yeah, when it comes to the stabilization of the GoPro Hero 9, the best way to do it is to use an additional software called Real Steady Go. Obviously, you can also use the Hypersmooth stabilization within GoPro, but you will get much better results if you use Real Steady because this software analyzes all of the gyro data of your GoPro and it just works its magic and it's going to be super smooth. It is probably the best stabilization I ever saw with any camera or any program so yeah it is definitely worth it and the way you use it is you just import all of the files straight onto your laptop then you load it into real steady and then you just set the trim points from beginning to end which part you want to stabilize and render and then real steady just works its magic and in the end you're going to have a really really smooth clip it obviously takes some time to stabilize and render all of the footage but for me it is 100% worth it because the results you get with it are just amazing and yeah there are a couple of of things you have to take care of if you use real steady when it comes to the settings of your GoPro so now I'm just going to talk you through the different settings I use for the best quality and stabilization and looks like Phil is just launching his drone also <laughs> man the spot is sketchy what does it look like Phil it's sick it's sick. <laughs> so I shoot in 4K, 4x3. That means that there's going to be a little bit more space at the top and the bottom of the image. So it's not going to be 16x9, but Real Steady is going to make a 16x9 version out of it. So it definitely makes sense to shoot in 4x3 because that gives Real Steady some more information. I shoot in 25 FPS. My lens is wide and hyper smooth is off. You need to shoot without any stabilization in the camera for Real Steady to work. My bit rate is high for the best possible quality and my shutter speed is 1 over 100. White balance obviously always dependent on the situation where you're shooting but for most cases I shoot in around 5000 Kelvin. When it comes to the ISO I obviously want to keep it as low as possible so I just set ISO min and ISO max to 100 so it always just stays locked at 100 and I'm going to put an ND filter onto the front of my GoPro. You can just easily attach and detach them by twisting them just like that and then you can put another ND filter onto it so that it matches your shutter speed and you have the correct motion blur. The sharpness I keep at low because I just think it looks kind of trashy to have over sharpened footage especially with action cameras so I just keep it at low and you can always still add sharpness afterwards in post. And last but not least when it comes to the color I just keep it in flat mode which is kind of a log profile so you just have more information in the highlights and in the shadows and you have more opportunities when it comes to heavier color grading. These were a lot of numbers now I'm just going to check out what the spot looks like and I'm just super excited to fly this thing here. Ah! that look pretty good, right? <laughs> Yo, so I just finished my first couple of flights here at this location. This location is still my favorite spot on Mallorca. It just never disappoints. Cliffs, the tower, uh, the ocean, and also here's a little lost place. I don't really dare to fly through that window yet, but maybe Phil's gonna do it with his freestyle drone. I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> 12 seconds later. Oh! 
And yeah, besides the insane stabilization that you get out of Real Steady and the GoPro 9, there is also one other reason why I put a GoPro on my DJI FPV, and that is the balance between quality and weight. I think that this is a really important topic when it comes to FPV drones, because obviously you want to have the most quality and the least amount of weight. So you kind of have to find a balance between both, because the bigger your camera is, the better is going to be your quality. But also the bigger the camera is, the less agile will be your drone, because if you're flying like one or two kilograms on an FPV drone, obviously you can't do the same movements as with a smaller setup. And on top of that also, your battery is going to be drained a lot faster. And I found out that the GoPro 9 is a perfect fit for the DJI FPV. I tried a couple of different ones and I found out that the maximum limit is around 300 grams. And this one weighs 161 grams, which I think is the perfect compromise between weight and quality. So during all of the flights that I already had with this setup, I actually felt super comfortable while flying it. I didn't really feel the weight of the GoPro on top of my drone. It just felt like flying the drone without it. The only thing that I recognized, <laughs> Phil is flying again. The only thing I recognized was that I got a couple of minutes less flight time because of the added weight, but it wasn't really a big deal. And I got a lot more quality out of it. I mean, if you look at the footage between the DJI FPV camera and the GoPro 9 side by side, you can really see that there is just more dynamic range and overall it just looks a lot more cinematic. I'm super happy with it so far, but Phil is actually also flying GoPros on his FPV quads. And um, let's ask Phil what kind of setups he actually uses. Gonna go up the tower. Goats. like the sketchiest tower ever and climbing it with one hand doesn't really make it better <laughs> oh shit <laughs> look at that view <laughs> can you take it <laughs> how cool is this spot yeah it's actually pretty sick it's not bad, right? I didn't expect that. Like, this is just perfect for diving down there. Well, it was a pain in the ass to get this stuff up here. Yeah, that's worth it. <laughs> that looks insane. That was not planned. Oh my god. What was that? That was weird. Yeah, and fucking scary. <laughs> These guys are so scared of DJI drones. <laughs> All right, Phil, so you actually also fly a couple of GoPros on your FPV drones sometimes, right? Yeah, when we're like out playing in the wild, let's say. <laughs> I don't wanna risk like a six to seven thousand dollar camera, so um, usually the GoPro. But on most of your shoots, you use another setup. You use... Yeah, usually we fly with the Blackmagic or the, with the red Komodo. He's flying Blackmagic cameras or reds on FPV setups. Actually, when you use those setups, also the quads are a lot bigger, right? Yeah, exactly and then also it's a paid job so yeah insurance will cover it and stuff like this i hope you guys saw already our amazing one shot we did so we used this little nugget for it and this one has actually a naked gopro on it i still fly with the gopro hero 6 because i really like the look of it and also like when you do really risky shots and you crash it time to time i mean yeah, the yeah. price comparison is a little bit different because they are like true, su true. super cheap now so <laughs> as you can see here 
is naked versus in the case. And actually we're gonna put our naked ones now also on a new frame. So we fly them on the, on the big five inch two, so you save another 100 grams. You don't have to charge batteries because it's powered directly from the drone, the GoPro. No way. So like, and also but, we but have- But you a, can only do that if you strip it, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I think that we've already seen a lot of different really cool cinematic shots at this location, but I actually wanted to go to the most northern part of the island. You have never been there probably. So I'm gonna show it to the guys. And also I want to show you a couple of shots from Phil because he is way more experienced than I am. So we're just going to drive to the next location and Phil is gonna show us what he's capable of. Let's do it. Making our way to the final spot now. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that view, guys. After an amazing day, together with Phil and Boris, there was only one question to answer. Is this the perfect FPV setup? I've now been flying the DJI FPV together with a GoPro 9 for more than two months, and I would say that this is the perfect FPV setup for beginners who want to have the best of both sides. Even though it looks pretty weird and is a pain in the ass to carry around, this drone setup combines the safety features of the DJI FPV with the amazing quality and insane stabilization of the GoPro 9. Being able to recover the drone after after losing connection and having a return to home function, enables people to get into FPV without wasting a lot of money on drone crashes and having a proper camera on top of it lets you capture solid quality video for professional filmmaking projects. So yeah, I really think that this is the perfect setup to get started with FPV if you want to get cinematic shots. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Also check out these guys up there who are taking selfies, Phil and Boris. Thanks for joining me on this video and um, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace out, bye bye.